What's going on everybody? It is your man Cleveland Terry and today we are going to be discussing a brand new application called SpinStream. This application is designed to remove the need for any external hardware in order to run your streams. Find out now. Now when SpinStream approached me and said, we have a brand new service, I thought, well, there was already loopback, so why would anybody go and use something else when loopback works perfectly? And well, there's a very obvious reason why. Loopback at $100 is very, very expensive. And for a lot of people, it might make more sense to just buy an external hardware source. It might cost a little more money, but then you know you're gonna be able to use that in the future. With loopback being $100, it takes a lot of people out of that game right off the bat financially. But with an app like SpinStream, the entry for this device is only $20. That's right, for $20, you can gain access to your hardware that previously you couldn't access without some sort of external thing, like your iRigs or like your Mbox or whatever audio card you've been using to this point. For me, I've been using my Mbox. Now, I did find a way to use my Rain 70, just changing some settings around an OBS, but what I complained about in my previous video was, it works, but it only works with OBS. So if I use it for any other software, for instance, my Ecams or whatever else, I can't get it to work because it's, a, it's essentially a hack in order to use it in OBS. SpinStream eliminates the need for any external hardware. So we tested it out. Now, when you first download the app and install it, it installs a very familiar application inside of it, and that is Black Hole. Now, if you know anything about Black Hole, Black Hole is like an open source software for audio configuration. Now, I downloaded that months ago as my first option, and I could not get it to work. So it's open source, and if you know what you're doing, that might be an option, but for most people, it's too much of a hassle. You bring in a company like SpinStream and they fix all that backend stuff for you. When you first go and you have to install this black hole software, once you do that, actually, your hardware will pop up automatically, except if the hardware is extremely new, there's a little something you have to realize. So when I initially opened up my Rain 70, a box popped up that said, this isn't configured, take a picture of this and send it to Sp Spin Stream is incredibly hard to say, Spin Stream. <laughs> so it says, take a picture of Spin Stream, the box, and then send it out to them. So I send it to my guy and within about, I don't know, an hour, and it's Saturday, okay? So within about an hour, he comes back and says, we'll get that in the system. When you open up Spin Stream next time, a box will pop up saying, update, here's the new hardware that we've located. So I went ahead and did that, and sure enough, everything worked the way it was supposed to. Here's the thing, I don't wanna scare you right now by you plugging it in, and then maybe your hardware hasn't been included in the catalog, and now your system won't work. That's not true. All I had to do was manually configure the channels that I knew worked for the Rain 70. But having them go in there and set it up means that for the next person that comes in with the Rain 70, it's gonna work right out of the box. Their customer service, the speed at which they responded and sent it out. As a matter of fact, even with my Rain 70, there was two other Pioneer mixers that weren't listed in the book. Speaking of Pioneer mixers, if you go to their website and check out their supported hardware, you'll see that they list the DDJ-1000 as a already supported hardware. Now, when I plugged in my DDJ-1000, it told me that it wasn't in the catalog yet. Now, the reason being is because my DDJ-1000 is the record box version, and I believe they were using the SRT version. So maybe the audio configuration is slightly different, but I got it to work just by manually changing it. Literally a drop down box change, and then you're good to go. You've selected your hardware. All you have to do is hit the start button. Now, the app needs to be active the whole time or it's not going to show up in your OBS. So just make sure it's on active. You can minimize it, send it down. Don't think about it ever again. As long as it's on, OBS will be getting that stream. In OBS, it was as simple as going in, adding a new audio input capture and then selecting the black hole 16 channel and that was it, done. Easy, the easiest way to do it. 
now that it's done, how does it sound? Well, I tested it with the software and it sounded like this. I went in and tested it with the Mbox, which is an external sound recorder, basically out of my XLRs, and it sounded like this. From where I stand, it's pretty much the same. You can't really tell the difference. So I have found a new friend in SpinString. This makes life so much easier, especially when you're dealing with the more complicated setup. Here's one thing that's actually really, really cool. If you are using, for instance, the Rain 70 and you are going out, or the S9 and you are going out to another computer, if you have two licenses, you can actually record both streams cleanly just using that. So if you have a computer that's outputting to say, you know, Mixcloud, or, and you have another one that's outputting to YouTube or Twitch, well, you can record both of them with no issue whatsoever. And there was no degradation in sound. Everything sounded great. Just going out of the main USBs, the two USBs, one in the one computer, one in the other, I was able to record both. So it's a very, very cool, application. One more thing, the software license is computer specific. So if you buy a license for $20 and you give them the email that you want to use and you put that email into the computer, that computer is going to lock that down. So if I go to my other computer, because I have two computers and I go to my other computer and I attempt to log in, it's going to tell me it's being used on another computer. So the only options are, are to email them and say, switch it to this other computer, or you buy another license. Now, it's only $20, so if you're looking at it from a loopback perspective, 20 and 20 is 40, you're still saving $60. Or, if you only have one computer, you're saving $80. So you're always saving money going this route. $20, that should be a no-brainer for most people, especially people that have gear on order and they're waiting for their hardware to be delivered because it's so hard to get streaming stuff right now. $20 will save the day. So check SpinStream out. I'm gonna put the information in my description in the details, but it definitely works for me. And for $20, no brainer. All right guys, thank you for watching the video. If you found what I said here useful, hit that like button. If you found what I said here really useful, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on the Instagrams and the Twitters. It's always a pleasure talking to you. If I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace. Just checked it out and of course the GDJ 1000 is there. However, uh, this is how you know it's made by real people because when they first sent the update, it said Panasonic DDJ 1000, not Pioneer. So these are real people working hard to give you what you need.